Healthy. In this video, we're going to discuss the spatial resolution and the minimum detection of EDS in TEM. Before looking at TEM, let's look at the effect of the beam energy on the interaction volume or beam spread in SEM. The left column shows the Monte Carlo simulation of electron beam interacting with copper. At lower voltage, such as 10 keV, the interaction volume is fairly small and the beam spread is small as well. At higher acceleration voltage, such as 30 keV, the interaction volume is a lot larger and the beam spread is a lot larger as well. What this tells you is, in SEM, if you increase the acceleration voltage of the beam, you degrade the spatial resolution in terms of the interaction volume and the beam spread. However, you will gain resolution by reducing the wavelength of the electron beam. So there is a fine balance between the resolution determined by the interaction volume and the resolution determined by the wavelength of the beam. In the right column of the slide, that shows the Monte Carlo simulation of the electron beam interacting with the TEM foil. Because the TEM foil has finite thickness, you will see very different observations compared to SEM. When the acceleration voltage is low, such as 100 keV, we have a lot of beam spread, as shown here. However, by increasing the acceleration voltage to 300 keV, both the interaction volume and the beam spread are reduced. To wrap up this slide, in SEM, if you increase the acceleration voltage of the electron beam, the interaction volume and the beam spread will increase. In TEM, Due to the finite thickness of the specimen, if you increase the acceleration voltage of the beam, both the interaction volume and the beam spread will be reduced. Next, let's look at how we can quantify beam spread in TEM. This equation is taken from the textbook. The level of beam spread is a function of Z, the atomic number, E0, the electron beam energy, NV, the number of atoms per unit volume, and T, the foil thickness. Higher number of Z, T, and NV will lead to more beam spreading, thus poorer spatial resolution will do EDS. In contrast, by increasing E0, you can reduce the beam spreading, thus improve the spatial resolution of EDS in TEM. As a TEM user, and if you want to improve the spatial resolution of EDS in TEM, there are two things you can do. First, you can reduce the foil thickness. Second, you can use a TEM with higher acceleration voltage. In the previous slide, we discussed how we can quantify the beam spreading, but how can we link the beam spreading to the resolution of EDS in TEM? On the left of the slide shows you a pictorial view. As the T, the sample thickness, increases, the beam spreads more and more, so that gives you like a cone-shaped interaction volume. Knowing B and D, you can calculate R max. D is the beam size, like how much you can converge the beam into a disk. R max is the beam size when it exiting the bottom surface of the specimen. The resolution of EDS in TEM, R, is defined as the average of D and R max. Due to the cone shape of the interaction volume, it will introduce artifacts when we do chemical analysis across an interface. Assume we have an interface that lies parallel to the electron beam direction. Then we have the electron beam scanning from the left to the right. In theory, there should be a sharp transition of the chemical composition across the interface. However, due to the beam spreading, the measured compositional file is sigmoidal in shape. In addition to the spatial resolution, another thing people are interested in when doing TEM EDS is the minimum detection. While reading the Williams and Carter Transmission Electron Microscopy textbook, I was impressed many times by the wittiness of the authors. What the authors stated here is that between the spatial resolution and the minimum detection, there is a truism. In many cases, if we try to improve the spatial resolution, 
we will sacrifice the minimum detection, while improving the minimum detection, we will sacrifice the spatial resolution. Here shows a good example straight from the textbook. There is a banana-shaped relationship between the spatial resolution and the minimum detectable mass fraction. For example, if we use the microprobe, the uh, spatial resolution is pretty bad, it's one micron, but the minimum detectable mass fraction is excellent, it's 0.01 way percent. In TEM, although the spatial resolution can be greatly improved down to a few nanometers to tens of nanometers, the minimum detectable mass fraction is not as great. The rule of thumb is if you have something less than 1% in your material, do not use TEM EDS to quantify that. It's interesting to note there's one outlier. If you are rich enough to afford a CS corrector, you can gain both the spatial resolution and the minimum detectable mass fraction. I took this image straight from the Hitachi website. On the top left is the annular dark field stem image of gallium arsenide. You can see the atomic columns but cannot tell the chemical information. By combining the atomic level imaging and EDS, researchers nowadays can do atomic level EDS to map the chemistry of individual atomic columns. The elemental maps shown down the bottom is just amazing. You can see the individual atomic columns of gallium and arsenic, as well as the combined image. By now, I have covered everything I like to go through for EDS. Starting from the next video, we're going to enter a new topic, also the last topic of our TEM course, electron energy loss spectroscopy, EOS.